Okay, here we go. NLP at Work, third edition, remember the fourth edition of the book will be out very soon, but the audio of that has been postponed until later in the year. So this is the third edition, which I wrote 10 years ago. Chapter one, what is NLP? Always a good challenge. And I start with a quote. What we see and hear is what we think about. What we think about is what we feel. What we feel influences our reactions. Reactions become habits, and it's our habits that determine our destiny. Just put my phone to one side. Um, that was by Bob Gass, but there's, that saying is probably in many different cultures. Well, it is. Um, it's been different forms of that have been spoken by many people. Neurolinguistic programming, NLP, is the study of excellence. It's an attitude. Well, I'll just kind of elaborate on that. It's a study of the structure of our experience, but I concentrated on the excellence part when I wrote this. It's an attitude of learning, curiosity, and respect for unique ways of being in the world. Over the years, NLP has uncovered an increasing number of tools and techniques for discovering what constitutes excellence. In particular, it's a means of finding the essence of that excellence, the difference that makes the difference, and in doing so in such a way that we can code it and reproduce it. We can have excellence at our fingertips, so to speak, you know, available whenever we choose. As a result, we can coach ourselves and others to consistently achieve the results that we want for ourselves, our business and our life. It's hugely liberating. <laughs> What is neurolinguistic programming? <clears throat> neurolinguistic programming, NLP, is a process of modeling. We'll come on to what that term means, but it's a term that's at the heart of NLP. The conscious and particularly the unconscious patterns that are unique to each of us in such a way that we are continuously moving towards a higher potential. NLP is not a thing, it's a study of what works, especially of what works well. What, and I would say, what, what is there not to like about that? It's about what works. Neuro refers to our brain and our physiology. We learn habits, some of which we need to get by in life. How to walk and talk, how to breathe, how to drive, how to ride a bike, how to eat, how to laugh and cry, and how to feel the way that we do. Most of our habits are stored in our unconscious mind. Some will be for the better and some will be for the worse. By increasing our awareness of the patterns in our thinking, we can learn how we are influencing the results that we're getting in work and in life more generally. The key to finding personal and business success comes from within ourselves, learning about how we think and how we are representing our experience enables us to find the answers that we want. Linguistic, is the verbal and nonverbal language that we use to communicate with ourselves and others. Our language is our life. What we can say is what we can think and what we can do. Learning to understand and master the structure of our language is essential. You know, in a world where communication in all its various forms is the lifeblood of our personal and business welfare. And the programming well, that's the way in which we put these patterns of thinking, language and behavior together to get the results that we do, both good and bad. We run our lives by strategies in a similar way that a computer uses a program to achieve a specific result. By understanding the strategies, we give ourselves choice. Choice to do more of the same or choice to enhance our potential and our individual excellence. In essence, NLP is the study, keyword, <laughs> of our thinking, behaviour and language patterns to help us build sets of strategies for everything that we do, for making decisions, for building relationships, for starting up a business, coaching a team of people, inspiring and motivating others, creating balance in our lives, negotiating our way through the day and above all, learning how to learn. 
the good news is that we can learn how to refine our existing strategies as well as discovering new ones and even discarding those that are redundant. The bad news is that for the most part, the critical pieces of these strategies are outside our conscious awareness. We don't know what we do or how we do it. <laughs> so this is the opportunity. With NLP, we can unpack not only the conscious elements, but especially the unconscious ones, so that we can learn how we do what we do. This allows us to do what we really want and achieve what we deserve. The best thing for being sad, replied Merlin, is to learn something. That's the only thing that never fails. You may grow old and trembling in your anatomies. You may lie awake at night listening to the disorder of your veins. You may see the world around you devastated by evil lunatics or know your honour trampled in the sewers of baser minds. There is only one thing for it then, to learn. Learn why the world wags and what wags it. That's the only thing which the mind can never exhaust, never alienate, never be tortured by, never fear or distrust, and never dream of regretting. Learning is the thing for you. T.H. White in The Once and Future King. I love that quote. I couldn't use it in the fourth edition because there are a lot more regulations about the quotes that could be used. So there's some things you're going to get here that, um, which I hope is legal, um, which you won't, won't get in the fourth edition, but there's other things you'll get in the fourth edition. The relevance of NLP. NLP will continue to increase in relevance as we embrace new cultures, break new grounds, challenge traditional ways of doing things and embrace those traditions too where appropriate. We need to learn how to use new technology in ways that are creative and different. If you do what you always did, you get what you always got. And it is the combination of thinking about thinking and technology that will set the new breed of leaders and independent business owners apart from the rest. There's nothing else in the world of human development and learning as powerful as NLP, in my opinion. <laughs> True. Emotional intelligence, spiritual intelligence, visualization, and various other concepts are derivatives of the NLP process. So another quote by Peter Small of the Entrepreneurial Web. The only route to understanding would have to come through creating a practical working model in your mind that could be used to rise above the detail. Every successful entrepreneur I've ever known has worked this way. From this high level view of the world, they create simple rule of thumb formulae that can be used as the basis for decision making. There's a very important expression in there as well, rise above, and that's very characteristic of what we can do with uh, this awareness through NLP is rise above things, which gives us a different kind of choice and if we're immersed in them. And this next paragraph is especially significant for me. I felt very emotional writing it. Um, and at first, my publisher didn't want me to include it. Um, I think I might have, I, th I can't remember if I wanted to include it in the second edition. But it took some go, it took some doing to get it included. And it's so significant for me. Um, anyway, here it is. We live in a world of unprecedented change. We are immersed in unpredictability and complexity. The more we discover, the more there is to discover. Every question reveals yet more questions. We need skills and attitudes to help us learn how to make sense of this chaos. When everything around us may seem to challenge who we are, we need to know how to find certainty within ourselves about what we want and what we believe. We need to take care of ourselves and stand alone in our self-assurance and our empathy for others. Yet we sometimes need to be able to show others our vulnerability and ask for help. We need to know how to pick ourselves up when we are down, to learn from uncertainty and disappointment, to shape our direction, and even to be prepared to lose everything. We need the capacity to move more quickly than ever before, and at the same time, to stand still and drink in the richness of the moment. We need to know how to communicate with people of vastly different cultures, and more than anything, 
how to communicate with ourselves. We need to understand others' perceptions, even if they are poles apart from ours, and we need to listen to the wisdom of our own bodies. We need to know how to laugh, to let go, to learn, to grow, to mourn, and to move on. We need humility and graciousness and the strength to absorb our own and others' inconsistencies. We need the resilience to remain in situations that cause us pain and to be able to find the joy in everything and everyone. We need to know how to find the excellence that is within us all and to celebrate it with every part of our heart and soul. We need to forgive others, but first we must forgive ourselves. We need to know how to forget and we need to allow ourselves and others to be who they truly are. We need to learn as we have never learned before. And above all, we need to love. Yeah, so very, it's a very significant paragraph for me that I think I, the time I wrote it, I just wrote it. I didn't. How can we achieve all this? In some ways, the answer is a paradox. Far from embarking on courses of accelerated learning and speed reading to be able to learn faster, we need to look within ourselves and find our unique resources. In this way, we can develop our own formula for success. We need to know how to learn from every situation, every person and every intuition. There's so much to learn in both technology and personal development that it's impossible for anyone to learn everything. It is our ability to manage our thinking, our conflicts and our experience that will ultimately make the difference between those who will lead the way into an exciting, creative and cooperative future and those who will rapidly fall by the wayside as they attempt to follow. This is what we can learn with NLP. It's just, this is true over time. You know, I wrote those words 10 years ago, just probably even more relevant today. What can you gain from this book? Success comes from within. Our success depends on our ability to be excellent in everything we think, say, and do. NLP provides us with a way to achieve this excellence. By mastering the concepts in the book and making them your own, you'll discover the excellence of your own and others' excellence. You'll achieve more of what you really want and become more of who you truly are. Excellence is context-specific. Many business models fail because they assume that what works in one environment will work in another. And yet what makes a leading entrepreneur in one environment may, may be quite different to what constitutes success in another. NLP is a means of coding excellence and enhancing it so that you can establish what really works for you in your environment and with your skills. More specifically, NLP can support you in learning how to do the following. So here's a, a list. To discover the essence of your excellence so that you can tap into that in whatever context you choose. To learn how to bring out that excellence in others, are very relevant for those of you who are in coaching and just in any relationships. To accelerate your ability to learn so that you can not only manage change, but initiate and embrace it enabling you to excel in your particular specialism and field of work. Learn how to laugh at situations with others in ways that create healing and learning. I put that right high up on the list. To discover how you relate to and use time and make choices that will enable you to experience time as you want. Learn how to listen with respect and naivety in a way that allows you to truly learn about others and their needs and wants continually develop new ways of thinking that support you, whatever the changes in this external world. To let go of old traditional patterns and habits that constrict your growth and release hidden talents that are appropriate today. To embrace feedback in a way that enables you to develop new ideas and products with the involvement of all of your customers, colleagues and friends. To set compelling outcomes for yourself, ones that by their very nature take on a momentum of their own and maximize the chances that you will achieve what you want, both personally and for your business. To develop formula for yourself, 
to enable you to respond to and more importantly take a lead in the world of high technology so that you combine the best of high tech thinking with awareness of yourself and others. To build high quality relationships with significant people in all contexts of your life in whatever medium is appropriate. To heighten your awareness of yourself and others so that you are sensitive to the subtle shifts in behavior and attitude that provide feedback on the effects of the way that you communicate. To develop your flexibility so that you have more choices and consequently more influence over the situations in your life. To improve your ability to generate commitment, cooperation and enthusiasm in the people around you. To manage your thoughts and feelings so that you are in control of your emotions and your destiny. To develop your ability to tap into your unconscious mind and draw on its superior power and potential. To accept and love whatever you have and in so doing love yourself and others in a way that transforms your business and your life. And more. <laughs> so those are the outcomes for that I've stated in the book for NLP and for readings, but there's, there is so much more. You'll find your own applications and your own formula for success. That's the real joy and the power of NLP. In business especially, NLP is the difference that makes a difference in personal and business coherence, communication, strategic thinking, e-business, motivation, influence, negotiation, leadership, entrepreneurship, and self-development. The list is indeed endless. Overall, the purpose of learning NLP is to generate further learning and to be the best you can be. If you want ready-made answers, it's not for you. How does it work? Let me just see how much more there is to go here, whether to pause there or not. Just another page or two. Uh, NLP pays very little attention to what people say they do, as it usually bears very little or no resemblance to what they actually do. You might think that by asking top achievers how they succeed, you'd get precise answers, but you'd be wrong. The key to success is often unknown at the conscious level. Being able to access the previously unknown pieces is sometimes referred to as the magic of NLP. It's not magic, merely an awareness of what really makes a difference. It's so often missing in more traditional models and techniques. I mean, there's lots of self-help books that tell you what to do, but they don't necessarily go into the specifics of how to do it. Using the tools of NLP, you can elicit these unknown pieces so that you can code talent. There'll be things that you don't yet understand. You know, do you know, for example, how it is that in some situations you have moments of brilliance, yet you can't produce them whenever you want? or how it is that sometimes you bring out the best in others, and yet at other times you only trigger the worst. Do you know what you do that's different in those relationships where you have exquisite rapport, where you know what the other person is going to say before they say it? Do you know how you control your feelings in some situations when in others you lose control? In those situations where you feel especially confident, do you know how you generate that inner feeling of calm and certainty, even when everything is stacked against you? And do you know how you attract people who want to be around you in work and life? Do you know how it is that some of your remote communications achieve as much, if not more, than face-to-face -face conversations? And do you know what it is about the way you use technology at those times that influences people to want to do business with you? And do you know how it is that sometimes everything you do seems just right? You feel at one with yourself and you achieve new personal bests. And do you know what happens at those times when you're able to shift gear to a more successful way of being so that you achieve more than you previously dreamt was possible? When you know the answers to these questions and others like them, you begin to have more choice over the way you think feel and behave. You have more influence over the way you respond to your unique calling in the world. 
there's quite a few references there, which I can give separately. And I finish each chapter with a story, which is very much the tradition in NLP. When I attended my first NLP training, um, they would always finish the day with a story, metaphors and stories. Um, and so that's, that's the structure that I used in the book. So this is the story before the end of the chapter. And the beauty of these stories is that they just can stay with you. You don't have to fully understand them or know exactly what they're saying at first. It's just, that's the beauty of a story, a metaphor. So there we go. William James is usually considered the father of American psychology. He was once invited to deliver a series of lectures at Harvard on a topic of his choosing. These lectures were presented on the green and were special in that they were open to the public. After some deliberation, he chose boldly, and the title of his first presentation was Can One Prove the Existence of God? Challenging. A topic sure to raise eyebrows in the early part of the 20th century in New England. Thus it was with some trepidation that he watched the audience file into the lecture hall, and sure enough, at the very last moment, a little old lady rushed down the center aisle and deposited herself front row center. Professor James presented his topic with his usual wit and charm. He noted as he worked his way through his lecture that the little old lady was very attentive and seemed to be enjoying herself. He did mark the fact that she seemed to laugh when no one else did. Nevertheless, all seemed quite in order. At the end of the presentation, which was very well received, the inevitable cue formed. And of course, at the end of the queue was the little old lady. When her turn came, she looked up brightly at James and said, Dr. James, I very much enjoyed your lecture, but I do still have one question. Please, madam, ask your question, returned William James courteously. Well, Dr. James, she replied with glint in her eye, if there's no God, what keeps the earth from falling down? James quickly reviewed his options. He considered such explanatory notions as centripetal force, gravitational systems, but he wisely chose to respond in such a way as to learn something from this woman. Turning his attention back to her, he said, Madam, I would be happy to answer your question, but tell me, what is it that you believe keeps the earth from falling down? Why, that's very simple, Dr. James. The earth is resting on the back of a giant turtle. James mused to himself over her extraordinary response for a moment, and then with a hint of triumph in his voice, asked the obvious question. Then pray tell me, madam, what keeps this giant turtle from falling down? No, 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 Dr. James, replied the little old lady. You can't get me there. It's turtles all the way down. <laughs> <laughs>